Hello, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of a upper Paleolithic Gravetian from Belgium called Goyet Q1161. I don't understand what the numbers 116 and 1 are supposed to mean here, but um, this is just the name of the sample and it's a male who's got Y DNA C1A, which is nowadays, this Y DNA is actually super exotic for Europe. It's um, a very East Asian haplogroup and most Europeans have like R1B, R1A, I, something else that's not C1A. This is what this individual is predicted to look like. With Maina Shakot too, he's predicted to have dark brown color eyes, snub shaped nose and black hair. Uh, for eye shape, my eye shape predictor too is giving him a South Asian eye shape. And for hair structure, my hair ID tool is giving him curly hair followed by kinky hair, followed by wavy hair. So definitely not straight hair. Uh, I think the prediction for straight straight shape hair was only like 4%, so definitely not straight hair shape. Uh, he doesn't have blue eye haplotype 1 or any of the other blue eye haplotypes that follow BEH1 uh, in OCA2 and HERC2 region, so definitely very dark color, eyes and hair and skin, everything. Uh, but he does have some light skin mutations, for example, in Keto G. He has got Eurasian white skin mutation that is found in Cro-Magnons pretty, at a pretty high frequency. And... Um, but he does not have any, does not have any derived variants in SLC24A5 or SLC45A2, which are sort of the European or uh, even you could say West Eurasian depigmentation alleles, uh, depigmentation variant variations that have to do with skin color. So uh, definitely quite dark skinned, a lot darker skinned than even say Arabs or like North Indians. Um, probably his skin tone was more in line with South Indian or South Asian individuals. And although he does have, have some light color variants in, uh, for example, TIRP1 gene, IRF4, and SLC24A4, and even OCA2 and ASIP genes, um, those light color variants are simply not enough uh, to make him have blue eyes or like blonde hair. That's not a possibility for him, right? Uh, there is absolutely no way for him to have to have non-brown eyes or non-black hair because my national code actually takes all of these variants into the account and when you take them into the account the possibility of blue eyes is still like 0 0.00070 zeros than than one percent and the possibility of bl uh, of blonde hair here is still 0 0.00 percent and it's going to be like seven zeros after the zeros so it's definitely not a possibility for him to have anything other than brown eyes uh, maybe light brown eyes but still brown and nothing other than black hair is possible for this individual. This is what he scores with Eurogenes K13 on GED match. As you can see, this individual, aside from having affinities to, like, obviously Europeans who do descend from him, or individuals like him, Europeans descend from Gravetians, Europeans have Gravetian admixture, this individual actually has quite a lot of affinities to South Asians, and in particular, uh, people of the Andamanese Islands, and you will see this with the oracle for this calculator. For Eurogenes K13, you can see um, with the oracle, it's, it's various Northern Europeans plus various South, like extreme South Asians, basically as South Asian as it gets, like Austroasiatic or Chenchu, very extremely South Asian groups. Um, and you will see this with the um, G25 as well. Uh, with the G25, this individual is actually also getting modeled as a mixture of various Northern Europeans or Northwestern Europeans plus, uh, for example, Ongye, which are uh, a Andamanese people, or basically a mixture of uh, extreme Northwest Europeans plus extreme South Asians. This is what he scores with MDLPK23B. As you can see here, he's scoring quite a lot of archaic human and archaic African, uh, which are both components you will not see uh, modern Europeans scoring, but these are actually Neanderthal components. Like if you add them up for Neanderthals, that would be 95% of what they score. Uh, this individual has some very clear affinities to South uh, South Indians and South Asians in general, which are obviously not present in modern Europeans. And um, with the Oracle, you can actually see him getting modeled as a mixture of Ongia plus Spanish from the Basque country, or Spanish plus Ongia, or Ongia plus French South, basically a mixture of Northwest or, or Southwest, basically a mixture of Western European, it seems like, plus Ongia is what you see with this Oracle. Um, a very interesting result. And this is what he scores with Harappa World. Here we can see once again a lot of South Indian, 17.6% uh, of South Indian. There is also quite a lot of Puan and Southeast Asian. Uh, if you add them up, that's going to be like 35% of his ancestry in total. 
uh, and he's actually also scoring some African as well. Uh, with the Oracle, this individual is getting modeled as a mixture of uh, white from Utah plus Onge, or British plus Onge, or once again a mixture of uh, some kind of Western European plus Onge, or Great Andamanese. Uh, so this individual clearly has a very major shift towards the extreme, uh, the extremes of South India and South Asia. This is what he scores with Gedrosia K3, which is sort of like the racial calculator on GD match. And in terms of race, this individual is ancestral only to Europeans. There is no group uh, who is not European who has ancestry from individuals like him. But he's very clearly not white. Like if you've seen his phenotype, uh, if you've seen his GD match results, this is not a white individual. Uh, this, this is somebody who, if he lived in a modern period, uh, would be classified as brown in terms of race. And uh, this is what you see with a lot of these samples from ancient Europe, from Paleolithic, for example. Uh, these people lived before a lot of the modern genetic drift that made white people white took place. They're the ancestors of Europeans, but they aren't Europeans and they aren't white because they haven't turned white yet. They were still brown people. They haven't developed the, uh, you know, white or European traits that we have today. Uh, I think the earliest group that was the most white for its time was... Uh, European Neolithic farmers, they score overwhelmingly, for example, they score for overwhelmingly West Eurasian on the uh, Gedrosia K3 calculator and they have the most, like, uh, they got the most European specific genetic drift. They are European Neolithic farmers, I will say, are more European than Western hunter gatherers are by far, because if you run Western hunter gatherers through uh, Gedrosia K3, they will score maybe 90 or 85 percent West Eurasian, whereas European Neolithic farmers, they will score 100 percent West Eurasian. That's the difference. European Neolithic farmers have a lot more West Eurasian or modern European genetic drift that Western hunter-gatherers simply lacked. And Eastern hunter-gatherers as well. Um, Eastern hunter-gatherers, I would say, are, I argue, are actually more European and more white than Western hunter-gatherers are because Eastern hunter-gatherers once again had a lot of this modern European genetic drift. They were simply more modern people than Western hunter-gatherers. Like It's like Western hunter-gatherer is a caveman, but Eastern hunter-gatherer is already all modern, in a suit and tie, working 9 to 5. You know what I mean? Like th That's the difference here. Anyway, let's not deviate too much from the topic and return to this individual's traits. Uh, we're going to select our Goyet Q116 and analyze their genome with my genome analyzer tool. He's got AA here, which means met met genotype. Okay, so this individual has got the warrior genotype in COMT, which means more dopamine, uh, increased dopamine levels, advantages in attention tasks and motivation. And this is a very stereotypically European genotype to have. Um, AG here, which means one no-go learner variant in zero D2's profilantin pro variation, which means intermediate number of D2 dopamine receptor sites in the brain. Okay, once again, a pretty typical European genotype to have. For non-Europeans, it would be GG here, but uh, sort of the A allele is the European allele here. Or you could say, um, you could say actually the A allele is the white allele, since we were just right now on the topic of whiteness. The white allele is the A allele. If you have the A allele, you're a little bit more white than if you have, for example, GG like me. <laughs> yeah, but um, AG here, which these two are linked. Um... GG in TAC1, which means typical genotype for most humans, leading to a slightly higher number of D2 dopamine receptors and a slightly lower risk of ADHD and alcoholism. Uh, once again, this is a typical genotype for humans. And, um, well, let's scroll past all of this. Let's get to 5-HTTLPR. TT here, which means does not have long-form 5-HTTLPR uh, and is at a higher risk, risk of depression. This is a typical genotype for most humans. Most humans have short-form 5-HTTLPR, not me. Uh, personally, not me, because I have, well, at least according to my genotype, I have long-form 5-HTTLPR, which means I'm a little bit, like, resistant to depression. Uh, pretty cool. GG here does not carry European lactose persistence mutation, and CC here, once again, does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. Once again, returning to the topic of whiteness, like, what is white genetic drift? What is modern European genetic drift? It's this, it's this, and it's this. These, this is a live example of modern European genetic drift. For example, it's super rare for Europeans not to carry the European lactose persistence mutation. And this individual doesn't have it. Why? Because it's simply an ancient individual who lived before this mutation took place. So he's ancestral to Europeans, but he's not a European, and that's why he's not white. So you get what I'm saying here, right? 
uh, for the empathy, TC here, which means intermediate OXTR expression and average levels of empathy, and GG here, two variants for lower levels of empathy. Interesting genotype here. For diabetes, sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes according to this genotype. And, well, nothing else matters. This is the only real uh, variation here that matters. For hemochromatosis, not a carrier. For Alzheimer's, wow. So he's heterozygous in this variation, which means one APOE allele and higher odds of Alzheimer's in this individual. So this individual does carry uh, the Alzheimer's APOE risk allele. Interesting. Might have Alzheimer's. For myopia, AA here, which is the typical genotype and leads to slightly increased risk of myopia or nearsightedness. Well, uh, most humans have AA here. Most humans have the same genotype as this individual here. For miscellaneous section, okay. Uh, so no micro, I'm, I can't really pronounce that. I don't think I can pronounce that uh, here on YouTube and still get monetized. So you, you guys can just read what it says on the screen. Maybe you can pause the video so that you don't miss it. But uh, this individual does not have micro p and um, this variation which var variant slightly increases cranial size and one percent higher iq a uh, mix of muscle types likely more sprinter than endurance athlete and he's got two fat gene variants in ftos um, rs 99 39 609 so this is like the fat gene i i added it here because i thought it sounds cool like fat gene sounds just epic <laughs> and i like uh having a little bit of fun here for drug response more likely to weight gain if taking Zyprexa and significantly more likely to gain weight if taking Zyprexa. So this individual would probably gain a lot of weight if they took Zyprexa. For albinism, uh, this individual isn't really genotyped for anything except for this one variation where uh, they are not a carrier for acutaneous albinism type 1b. So this individual is not albino. Now, thanks for watching my video until the end. Um, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. You can download this genome in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. And uh, goodbye.